I just finished voting for the first time ever here in Taiwan and during the process I learned a lot of things regarding the Taiwanese elections that I had no idea about and that I guarantee you that 99% of at least the foreigners watching these videos just would not believe. So I need to go back home right away and then we continue with this video. Now, first things first, I do not have any political affiliation with any political party here in Taiwan. I have not received any money or any incentives whatsoever for making this video. This is just to raise awareness of the overall Taiwanese election and the voting process we have here in Taiwan. Honestly, I have no idea if that little disclaimer will help me in any legal way, because as you will notice throughout this video, the election and the voting procedures here in Taiwan are just as important as they are sensitive and there are tons of things you can cannot do regarding the Taiwanese elections, which is the thing that shocked me. But in order for everyone to be up to speed, I think it's important for us to actually start at the beginning. Exactly 87 years ago, in November 1935, the first official election took place here in Taiwan, as the Japanese colonial government was electing half of their city and township councillors. But actually only 0.7% of the entire population was allowed to vote in that election, since first of all you had to be a man, second of all you had to be above the age of 25, and third you had to pay an annual tax of 5 yen or more. And I actually tried to find what this would be in today's value, but it was actually quite hard to find in 1935 years Japanese yen in Taiwan current exchange rate online but with a little bit of math I think we are talking about 140 cents in USD with which today's exchange rate and also adjusted for inflation would be somewhere close to 30.5 USD. But now 87 years later there is once again time for local elections here in Taiwan and I should also clarify that of course there have been regular local elections in between this time as well so this is not the first local election in the these past 87 years, but I think you get my point. And not only are women allowed to vote in this election, at least 25% of all the elected officials in each district must be female. And just as a reminder, this video is only about the election that is happening this week here in Taiwan, which is the local election, since Taiwan has separated between the local and the national general presidential election. But do not make the mistake to believe that this election is by any means less important than the national presidential one because we are talking about selecting 11,023 officials to be selected for the next four years here in Taiwan. So literally anywhere you go in Taiwan right now, you will literally be surrounded by all kinds of promotional posters, promotional banners, cars and street parades with loudspeakers just shouting out the different campaign slogans. So with all of that said, it is not difficult to understand how Taiwan could be the number one full democracy in Asia and eighth in the world with a perfect 10 out of 10 score when it came to the electoral process and pluralism. But although Taiwan ranks super high in the overall rankings, there are also a few restrictions when it comes to the elections here in Taiwan. And for the purpose of this video, I have actually gone and read through all 134 articles in the Civil Servants Election and Recall Act, as well as the 363 articles of the Criminal Code of the Republic of China. And I also read through the Central Election Commission's entire FAQ section. And what I found is somewhat terrifying and something I guarantee you that 99% of foreigners living here in Taiwan and 100% of foreigners outside of Taiwan have absolutely no idea about. For example, the second paragraph of Article 56 of the Civil Servants Election and Recall Act. Any of the political parties or persons may not conform to any of the following circumstances, the campaign, electioneering or recall activities on the polling day. Now, what this means is that any kind of campaigning or promotional activities on the voting day is strictly prohibited. And by strictly prohibited, I mean strictly prohibited. And if we are continuing reading until article 110, we see that the fine for breaking article 56 is between 500,000 and 5 million. And those who refuse to listen after being stopped shall be punished successively. But of course, I dug even deeper for you guys. And if we are taking this one step further and we check the frequently asked questions at the Central Election Commission, they define these promotional activities as distributing leaflets, hanging flags, wearing candidates' campaign vests, wearing a face mask with a candidate's campaign sign, and even sending short messages, line stickers, and reposting. Now, this is the reason for why you haven't seen 
any kind of videos from outside Taiwan in this video that are including these promotional banners, these promotional cars with loudspeakers and these photos of these candidates literally everywhere here in Taiwan. If you have not experienced this, then this is on a completely new level and it's absolutely nothing compared to how it would look like in Sweden at this time, which is, you know, some small posters along the side of the road. Here, like entire buildings are covered, entire cars are covered and literally anywhere you will go in Taiwan right now, there will be cars going with huge signs on them and then loud speakers with messages from, I assume, the candidates themselves. And every candidate has also been given a specific number, which is their voting number which the voters will use in order to show who they are voting for on the election day. Hopefully a lot of people are watching this video and a lot of people are supporting me by subscribing to this channel but sometimes people are also reposting and sharing my videos and if I would then include any sort of promotional banners or posters from any of these candidates if someone is reposting my video on election day they could actually be fined between 500,000 and 5 million Taiwanese dollars just for reposting one of my videos on social media on election day. And if you do think that I'm just being completely ridiculous and just completely over exaggerating everything right now, then the Central Election Commission is actually listing out Facebook Instagram, Line and other online platforms specifically and they also go as far as saying that any behavior that make a candidate elected or not elected is prohibited such as making specific gestures such as the peace sign to represent number two, remember every candidate will be given their specific number or an okay sign to represent number three. I don't know what is more crazy, the fact that they actually have these rules in the law regarding the Taiwanese elections or the fact that during the last local election in 2018, the head of a village in Tsuing district in Kaohsiung was actually fined 500,000 Taiwanese dollars for pointing his finger while greeting the voters symbolizing number one. And speaking about really having to control your fingers during election day, anyone who places anything other than the ballot for election or recall into the voting box or tears up the received ballot by intention should be fined a sum of not less than 5,000 NT and not more than 50,000 NT. And in addition, according to Article 108, anyone who carries the received ballot for election or recall outside the place of voting shall be condemned to fixed term imprisonment or penal servitude of not more than one year or find a sum not more than $15,000. And Article 63 and 105 in this act says the elector should not show the contents of ballot to others and if they do so shall be condemned to fixed term imprisonment or penal servitude of not more than two years or find a sum of not more than 200,000. Now, I think this would be a great time for myself to explain the beginning of this video in a little bit more detail and also show you this exact ballot, where I got this from and why I decided to bring this out on the middle of the streets here in Taiwan. So, full disclosure, this was actually the first time I voted here in Taiwan. But since I am not a Taiwanese citizen, I don't have the household registration here in Taiwan, I am not allowed to vote in any of the Taiwanese elections. Instead, I of course voted in the Swedish elections, but from here in Taiwan, which, by the way, is not something that is allowed for Taiwanese people voting in Taiwanese elections. They do not allow mailed-in votes, which means that no Taiwanese person outside side of Taiwan will be eligible to vote. You actually have to go back home to your household registry address or district in order to place your votes in person. Which also means that currently everyone who is in quarantine during COVID will also not be allowed to vote in this year's election. I personally think that me as a foreigner who has no right to vote in the Taiwanese election also should not have any right to comment on if it's right or wrong for these confirmed COVID cases who are currently in quarantine to be allowed to vote in these local elections or not. Since the current voting laws prohibit them from voting by mailed in votes and the current COVID guidelines 
forbid them to actually leave their quarantine. That is not a debate for myself or a debate for this video. I just thought that this was worth mentioning since it actually affects a huge portion of the eligible voters in this year's local election. But for myself and for my vote, I was still able to make my voice heard from here in Taiwan since Taiwan is respecting the Swedish democratic process allowing us to mail a vote from Taiwan to Sweden and a special thanks to the Sweden in Taiwan office who actually put up their own voting booths and then we can just cast our votes anonymously same procedure as it would be back home in Sweden and then the office will take care of all our votes send it back anonymously back to Sweden and the general voting collection counter person that we have somewhere back home in Sweden. And I think I should also clarify that this ballot that I was showing in the beginning of this video is not taken out from the Sweden in Taiwan office. Instead, this was actually sent directly to me from this party themselves. I'm not saying that I voted for this party. However, this party is actually the newly elected prime minister of Sweden. And not only did they actually send me this ballot, they also sent me a personalized video greeting thanking me for the future participation in the Swedish election, not necessarily voting for his party in particular, but just the importance of me voting in general and still being a part of the Swedish democratic process, although I have decided to live my life and spend my time here in Taiwan. And although technically it wouldn't be illegal for me to share who I voted for in the Swedish election, that doesn't really matter. That was not the main point of the Prime Minister's video message to me, and it's also not the main point in my now video message to you. Only thing that matters is that you actually do go out and vote and not let your democratic right go to waste. Even if you have absolutely zero interest yourself, then simply just don't do it for yourself. Do it for the 99.3% of the population who wasn't even allowed to vote back in 1935. Do it for the future generation who will actually be growing up with the result of this election for the next four years, do it for my old high school teacher Kent Gustafsson so you have the right to complain for the next four years if you do not agree with the results of this election or just simply do it so we continue to have the number one full democracy title here in Asia because democracy matters, your vote matters and most importantly Taiwan matters. And instead of ending this video with reminding everyone to subscribe to this channel, I want to end this video with a short clip from the Swedish member of parliament, Borjana Åberg, from earlier this year when she was here having an interview with myself, talking about the relationship between Sweden and Taiwan. I vet vad frihet betyder, I vet vad demokrati betyder och därför är djupt imponerat av Taiwan, ett litet land, en ö av demokrati i en värld som går i motsatt riktning. Så vill man på alla sätt ställa sig bakom Taiwan och stödja landet som är ett lysande exempel på frihet, demokrati och respekt för mänskliga rättigheter. Och det andra syftet är att visa att vi står bakom Taiwan.